Under the Ash, Druidry, Nature, Folklore. Welcome to Under the Ash, a new podcast looking at Druidry, Nature, Folklore and more. In this first episode, we're looking at the Festival of Imolk with visits to locations out in nature, thoughts and musings on the season from Druids and Pagans and poetry to honour the season and the goddess Bridget. In the Druid and wider pagan traditions, the 2nd of February, or the period from the 31st of January to the 2nd, brings us the festival of Imolk. The word itself comes from the older oimelk, which means of milk, or in the belly, revealing the connection this time of year traditionally has to the time the ewes of sheep flocks begin producing milk, having recently given birth. Although this is the cold part of the year, Imolk is the first of a trio of spring festivals in the eightfold wheel of the year, the very first stirrings of new life. It's a festival full of imagery that I love and really feel in my bones during these dark nights and bright cold days. The white of the frost, the snow, ewe's milk and snowdrops. The cold, the quiet and the promise of new greenery just under the surface, of seeds stirring and waking up, a season of hope, but also of nourishment, an energy we can drink in to sustain us through the last of the cold. All of this seen in the appearance of snowdrops on the middle of Dartmoor. So it's a day at the end of January in 2022, and I'm standing here in the churchyard of St Raphael's Chapel on Dartmoor. It's late afternoon, you can hear the bird song, the river across the road, the water rushing over the rocks, and it's very nearly Imolk in a few days. And the reason I'm here in this particular churchyard is because there is a already a thriving bed of snowdrops. There are all these beautiful little white droplets just scattered across the green of the grass here. And it's an interesting place to be ready for Imolk. Because we'll be talking elsewhere in the podcast about Brigid Brigantia and the idea of new life and healing and St. Raphael. And this chapel are dedicated to healing as well. So even here in this place that feels very Christian... There are some other links into the pagan vibe of this time of year. And it's really heartening. It's one of my favourite moments in the year where you get these little bursts of snowdrops. The first spring flowers of the year and that idea that we're probably in the coldest part of the year now as the climate shifts. But there's this sense that new life is starting up again. We've got new growth here. And when we were driving up onto the moor, Earlier on, we were driving through some areas that have been affected by wildfires. And you can see the regeneration, the new growth there on top of the burnt bracken. So there's a real healing sensation to this place. And a real sense of hope for the year ahead after a few years of, well, maybe needing a little bit more hope than usual. And I'm just going to have a little bit more of a walk around and see what else this place has to offer. I'm just at another end of the churchyard and there's this rather magnificent holly bush here. And of course we associate the evergreens with the winter solstice now some weeks back. And the evergreen sort of promise of life in the middle of winter when other things are dying off. But it's nice here to have the two side by side. We've got the holly bushes and the sight of the snowdrops handing over from one part of the eightfold wheel of the year into the other. And it's so peaceful here. What a beautiful place. What a gift for Imolk. Just walked down from the chapel to the river, which hopefully you can hear in the background. I'm standing by this huge turn 
in the waters as they change direction and there's this bigger expanse of water these really gentle ripples running across it before it gets to the white froth over the rocks further down and when we first arrived as the sun's going down there was this beautiful golden light casting over the water this real vision of fire and water meeting in this one space in the middle of the moors and all of these stones here at the water's edge as well green moss and lichen really feels like something out of a fairy tale and really like the perfect place to see in the very earliest stirrings of spring so if you can make it out here to visit i fully recommend it absolutely worth doing some thoughts reflections and poetry now on the theme of imolk from guest contributors eve salthouse and andy norfolk Most pagans see Imolk as a spring festival, a time to celebrate the first signs of spring. Optimistic souls. I suppose there are snowdrops and crocuses, but spring? Imolk's still a time of ice and snow and darkness. The cold and the dark are still with us. It must have been a really dark time for our ancestors. If there'd been a poor harvest, if it had been a long, hard winter, the writing would have been on the wall for some of them. The old, the weak, the very poor. They might not have made it to the spring. It's a cold, dark time. In my mind, it's still winter. We celebrate the return of the sun at winter solstice. We see the sun rise or set at a different point on the horizon. We take that as a promise that the sun will return. But it's a big planetary scale promise, though. A divine celestial event. The movement of our world, our whole planet, in relation to our star. It involves forces we can't really comprehend. It's above us. It's more than human. But Imolk, I see Imolk almost as that same promise, but on a smaller human level. We see those delicate wee flowers, the buds on the trees, the pussy willow. Perhaps in our agricultural past, we might have seen farm animals being born. A promise of sun return made in more humble human terms. Even the way we traditionally celebrate Imolk is altogether more small scale, more human. We don't light great bonfires, but a candle in the window. We're not out celebrating among great stones. We celebrate at our hearths at home. We make reed crosses or dolls out of reeds. Nothing grand or mighty. We're still huddling at our hearths, lighting our way with a candle flame. We celebrate poetry and smithcraft, both crafts of fire and passion. The land might still be locked in ice and frost, but we're defiant like those little flowers. I don't really see Imolk as about pretty flowers and fluffy lambkins. We're being defiant in the dark. We're hanging on. We're going to make it to the spring. Imolk is not a fixed point. OK, it's halfway between winter solstice and spring equinox, but it's still a time of shifting tides in the natural world. The land is stirring from its winter slumber and hinting at the beginning of spring. Here in Cornwall, the bluebell leaves are up, the woodpeckers are drumming in the woods and the daffodils are beginning to flower in the fields. The days are longer and there's a sense of hope and optimism. Imolk is a feeling, a sense of returning light. Now is the time to light candles in your life to show the way forward. Now is the time to use your smithcraft to weave the poetry of the coming days and to be well. The world is changing with seasons, and you can make it, and yourself, the better for that shift. Blurgen erch, i tons in scav an voren wov, a drurs san solith tir, di worth do rish hadon, o covelia bunans ear, flamo glas i lescons, in holsplan gwenten guan, in awel glor in ran pureth, 
in Guaitian's Hurth per Faith, a Ambos Herneth Grease, Mes Nahuath Colin Rees. The maiden dances lightly on the land, her deft feet forging new life from deep rich earth. Finely wrought green flames flicker and burn in the slanting spring sunlight. In the chill breezes, enamelled purity shivers in anticipation of promises yet to be kept. Hello, my name is Linda Haggerstone. I live in the west of Scotland. I'm Canadian, and I became a druid in about 2007. My bardic initiation took place among many treasured friends, and on that day, two very special people, beings, attended my initiation. There was a beautiful, shy lurcher named Hamish, and unexpectedly, a very large earthworm that I called Wormish. Both Hamish and Wormish inspired me that day, and I've been a bard ever since. Today, I would like to read for you an excerpt from the most remarkable book, The Lightbringers, by Karen Celestine. I'll just read a short excerpt from that book, and then a piece of my own writing in honor of Brie St. Bridget and Imok. So, first the excerpt. The creatures feel the pause and the shift and murmuring of earth's sleep. And so it begins. At the sound of her outbreath, the hare, who has guarded the moon full of the silver shining light of the sun, calls the small ones to her. All through the darkness, small beings gather up the tiny sparks, almost extinguished, but not quite. They take the embers and gently place them in their sea lanterns, and they start to walk. One by one, they come out and gather together the light bringers, the bearers of spring. And my own reading, which was written in Glasgow, in uh, the West End, at a church in the courtyard. And uh, this is Breed's Fountain, weeping for the love of Breed. My tears filled the fountain. The milky water rose, and from the centre of the pool, the lady's blessings rippled outward. Anahita of the Celtic lands, Guan Yin of the enchanted isles. She came to me, singing sweetly in the night, whispering my name. Bubbling up from the earth, her laughter lifted me. Dancing round the circle, her flames embraced me singing sweetly in the night, whispering my name. Minerva of the Oaken Grove, white buffalo woman, is here. She stays with me. The milky waters rise. And from the center of the pool, the lady throws out her mantle net, sleeping in the arms of Brie. My dreams fill the fountain. Thank you for listening. Blessings of Imok to all. A big thank you to our three guest contributors this month for sharing your thoughts about this season. Now we turn to the other aspect of Imolk, often associated with the goddess Breed, Brigid, Brigantia, the Saint Brigid. We welcome her energy into the podcast with some words from me, followed by a poem in her honour by the poet Tom Bolton. Brigid of the Fiery Arrow, Bright Brigantia. Healer, poet, queen, may the warmth of your inspiration guide the golden honey of our poet's tongues out into the world. Let us bathe in your healing waters where three streams meet, and warm ourselves by the radiant flame you tend. Beloved seer, from our hearths to yours, we sing praise and thanks in the names of truth and beauty and the promise of spring. 
Sit with us a little while, beside our candles and our wells, and let us watch together as the raven builds his nest. Hail Brigantia, keeper of the forge, she who shapes the world itself with fire, she who ignites the spark of passion in the poets, she who leads the clans with a warrior's cry, she who is the bride of the island, and who leads the fight of freedom. Hail Brigantia, defender of kin and hearth, she who inspires the bards to sing, she who drives the smith to raise his hammer, she who is a fire sweeping across the land. The sacred three, to save, to shield, to surround, the hearth, the house, the household, this eve, this night, and every night. Hi, I'm Tom Bolton. Uh, I was Poet Laureate for the City of Plymouth between 2016 and 2020. I'm a regular performer in the South West. I've read at Cross Country Writers, Wonder Zoo, Plymouth Language Club and the Port Elliot Festival. Um, I've also had the privilege to read at the Pagan Federation Conference. Uh, it was held in Glastonbury. Got the claim that I've read in Glastonbury. Not the big festival. But a, but a little one. I've also been involved in projects like the artistic response to the Poppy's Wave that was, was on the Ho, robotic poetry collaboration with Volume AI, which was awesome. Uh, I've been lucky to work with Radio Devon during lockdown. We did a weekly poetry slot. And uh, now I've got my own local community radio show, Deadbeats, on P-Town Radio. I have two collections, Primer Materia, which was my first, which was autobiographical, 13 years of my life. And my most recent one is... Gibo, and as you can tell, both of them have got alchemy and runes and, you know, pagan elements that are interwoven into the modern take, the contemporary feel of the books. The poem I'm going to read for you today is called Bridget and is in honour of the goddess and in bulk and draws on lots of different symbols, lots of themes to do with the goddess, to do with the coming of spring, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Bridget. Wisdom irritated into frozen fractals on the forest floor. They will thaw and gather with the thickening flame. Laws of physics, laws of healing, shrinks the frightened shadows on our foreheads. Wound darkness evaporates, a coverlet lifts, the land stirs and rises, stretches open palms to greet a fresh warmth now present. Midwife, guide this newborn. Let its cries feed flowers, let the flowers feed bees. Tell the bees the old master is dead, garner their gift and bake it into our bellies. The ghost of wolves howl to purify their bright eyes. Howls trapped between their moon and the snow moon. Let them gaze upon her name, bless it and us, for we reside in her grave, a cross of stone to mark the soul. For we are tuned into the song, soaked in its melody that skims across Plutonian waves, crashes into the land of thunder. The land of snakes, where keepers of the cauldron and its secrets assemble in great mystery to witness the thickening flame. How it burns fetid flesh, grafted with grasses from the sole of viridescent skinned feet. He who comes to dance in spirals between the scalfs and the spools through the tombs calling to unpick discreet syncretisms. Dawn goddess, your red candle lit by a kiss from the thickening flame. Your appetite grows, hungry for renaissance, a proem for vernal phenomenon. Unto the Ash 
was written and presented by me, John Nash, with thoughts and musings from Eve Salthouse, Andy Norfolk, Linda Hagerstone, and poetry from Tom Bolton. Music by Mr. Smith, licensed under Creative Commons. If you'd like to get in touch, you can email us at undertheashpod at gmail.com or find us on Facebook, Under the Ash, and Instagram, at undertheashpod. Until next time, go gently.